Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nation. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His compassions never fail. They're new every morning. His faithfulness is great. They're new like this morning. Another opportunity to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I am Pastor LaWanda Ware, and I'd like to welcome you to New Birth Christian Center. I want to invite you into prayer, worship, and the word. I look forward to worshiping to the Lord today. I have an understanding is that his, his compassions, his grace, and his mercies that I'm standing right here this morning preparing to go into worship with God's people. Why don't you gather your family around your life room and get one heart and one mind and remember the goodness of God as we go into worship and worship him with everything that is in you. Bow your heads with me as we go into prayer. Father, I thank you for this morning. We realize, God, that this new breath, this new opportunity is because of your compassions toward us and that they never never fail. We understand that your faithfulness toward us is never ending, even when at times we are faithless. Father, go with us today. Meet us in our place of worship. Touch us where we lack. Heal us where we're broken. Give us direction, God, where we're confused and lost. God, we give you all the glory and the honor and praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now let's go into worship. I have come to magnify the Lord on this morning because he's worthy of all of our praise on this morning. If you've turned your living room into your life room, go ahead and stand up on your feet. Feel free to clap your hands and worship the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah, Jesus. We will worship the Lord with praise and we'll shout in all the earth. He deserves glory. Yes, he does. Sing. For he is the great I am. 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 We will worship the Lord with praise we'll sing and we'll shout in all the earth. He deserves glory. Yes, he does.
worship God and thank him for his mercies. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord.
It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we're able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. Welcome to New Birth Christian Center. I hope that you've enjoyed the awesome praise and worship and the mighty move of God already. Um, I appreciate our praise and worship team and how the Lord uses them. Um, today, um, I want to take the time and just kind of talk to you about um, your faith and how to be strengthened in it. But before I go on, I want to um, let everyone know that that have suffered loss in, loss in the season, those that are battling, um, those that are battling sickness, those that are, are battling different things. It seems like the enemy is coming in. But remember that the Lord will lift up a standard on our behalf. We are praying for you here at New Birth Christian Center. You're always resting in our hearts and on our minds, and we're always interceding for you, um, understanding that the world is a, in a very uncertain place, but we serve a God that's not moved by circumstances. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will stand forever. And so I need you to know that we're praying with you today and that we're believing God, those of you that are struggling, those of you that have suffered loss in these last couple of days, the Lord has not forgotten you. He's with you and he loves you. I want to go into the word and I want to talk about uh, last week, uh, Bishop preached an amazing message um, dealing with the trying of our faith. And it, he talked about um, your faith. And if it hasn't been tested, it really can't be trusted. And we, I want to stay right there in that same vein. Um, I want to talk about faith and give you the description or the scriptural understanding of what faith is. Hebrews um, 11 and 1 says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't do not see. Hope is believing um, that something is true and committing your lives to that truth. 
Hope is grabbing a hold of something that may not be seen and living and trusting um, God for it until it comes to fruition. And basic, our pastor said, is, is reaching into nothingness with the hope um, of the future and holding on to it by faith, knowing that God will bring it to pass until you see the manifestation in it. It's an amazing thing what faith is. It's believing in God and the work of Christ that Christ did on the cross for our, our salvation and understanding and believing with everything in us. It's because of that work on the cross that we have the hope of salvation and the hope of eternity. I want to talk to you about faith in a little bit different way today. I want to talk to you about faith and the legacy of faith. Um, the older I get, and I, I don't like to say that I'm, I'm very old, but the older I get and the mature, more mature I get, um, I've always thought that I want to leave my children things that are tangible, and I want to make sure that things are in order, and we should do that. We should make sure that um, as, as parents, that when we leave here, it's not a weight or a burden on our children, but I want to talk to you about things that are not tangible. Um, the older I get, I was talking to Bishop on the other day, and I told him, I want to make sure that I've left our children a legacy of faith. And when you talk about legacy, a legacy is defined or involves living intentionally and aiming to build into the next generation for their success. I want to live intentionally my life full of faith not just believing, but knowing that God will take care of me and everything that concerns me, knowing that he will answer, knowing that he will provide, knowing that he will sustain. I want to intentionally live that life in front of my children. So when the tangible things may run out, when they may run out of money or when they may run out of things or when things that um, here on earth may seem uncertain, that there is a trust and a belief and a knowing in God that he will take care of us because he loves us. And so um, Joshua uh, said it like this, Joshua, the fourth chapter, the 21st and the 22nd verse, he says, he said to the Israelites in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on dry land right in this spot. You know, they were talking about they wanted to leave a memorial stone that spoke to the trying of their faith and how they overcome by standing on faith. It was it was um, a season where the Jordan was rising and it was high and overflowing its banks. See, we look at um, the, the, the Red Sea and we think that that was the only thing that the children or um, um, water that the only children of Israel crossed. But you have to look at the Jordan as they got ready to cross over into Canaan. It was overflowing its banks during that time. And they believe, and the Bible says that as the priests put their feet into the water, that the water um, withdrew and they walked on dry land and in the middle of that Jordan they left memorial stones um, to signify that that's where they crossed over as a reminder when the ch their children asked what are those stones for it was because we were our faith was tried and we stepped out in faith trusting God to part waters to part situations to meet needs on our behalf and that's what he did that's the type of legacy I want for my children I want to leave them something and, and for them to know about my legacy of faith is for them to observe me going through trials and to maybe be downtrodden and maybe to go through but still be able to hold my head up and say that God is going to see me through this. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know why I'm going through it. But one thing I know that God has never failed me and that he's true and that heaven and earth may pass away but he's true to his word and that every promise is sure that he's not a man that he would lie nor the son of man that he would repent and so sometimes in children watching the, the definition again of, of, uh, of the legacy is it involves them intentionally seeing you build 
um, into the next generation for their success. Sometimes we go through things and yes, we don't want our children to know everything that we're going through. But sometimes when they see you going through, you need to be able to touch them on their back or pat them on their head and let them know I may be going through right now. This may be a, a, a Jordan time or a, um, a Red Sea time, but I know that God will part the waters of my situation. See, they need to know and they need to be able to have a reference point more than what the, you can leave them in your will or more than what's left on your insurance because money will only take you so far, but it's the faith of God that will sustain you and that will give you peace, a legacy of faith. Sometimes, you know, we don't want them to know that mom and dad are going through some things. Things, but but them knowing and seeing you gather together and seeing you pray and seeing you trust God and hearing you, you them tell you tell one another that it's going to be all right that God has promised us this and that we will make it through and then to see God respond to what you're saying your 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 um your words um have the power to begin to put things in motion the power of life and death rests in the tongue so as we begin to speak faith to our children that no matter what things look like no matter how dark the night that God is still faithful once those are some of the things that no one else can take from your children once they know who you are and once they know that you stand and you know sometimes we as uh, once we get older we criticize the older generation because we're smarter and we're wiser but if you begin to look back in the eyes of faith and with the eyes of truth and we've seen our families where they work whether they work the field whether um, um, grandma or mom had spread a meal whether she didn't know if she had enough beans or had enough meal to make cornbread but there was always enough on the table see we want to look down on those negative times and not look at work how God moved on our behalf and say I'm not gonna live the way my parents lived but the thing about it is although they may have struck they struggled with the understanding that God would be their provider and if we begin to not criticize what we think that we're above now and understand that it was the faith of our fathers and our mothers that kept us that kept families together that be began to build homes that taught us about the word of God that took us to church that taught us to pray those aren't popular things right now but it, it was those things during those times that built stronger people that made people People survived they, they didn't quit because they stood we saw them weep but they still believe God we saw mama you know get on her knees and, sh and shake her head and not understand and then find out you know begin to hear her sing songs like I feel like going on though trials hard on every hand I feel it was the faith that was built in her it was the faith that took her through when we as children had fevers and there was no money for doctors we we want to live beyond that because as long as we have our insurance we don't need the faith and as long as we have the education we don't need the faith but it's the faith that carries us when the doctor said there's nothing that we can do and it's the faith that carries us when the money runs out it's the faith that carries us when the storm comes in it's the belief of God that sustains us because he speaks to the storm and he settles them he turns the Bible says that the king's heart is in the Lord's hand it's the it's God that begins to turn situations situations on our behalf is our faith in him and as I begin to look back at, at my ancestors my mother my father the things that I seen and that I heard them go through and them still stand and still hold families together and still tell us that God is good and still tell us that we can make it it's that faith in God the legacy of faith that has been left to us that we want to leave behind for what we think is something better I want to go on I want to go to second Timothy uh, the first chapter, the first through the sixth verse. The Lord laid the legacy of faith on my heart and I just begin to read and to seek out. Timothy writes this letter to his son in the gospel. And he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembered thee in my prayers both day and night. Greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of your tears that I may be filled 
with joy. And this is the key verse. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it's in you also. Wherefore, I put in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on or the laying on of my hands. And I'm going to read down just a little bit further. He says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but that of power and of love and of the sound mind. And I want to go back to the fifth verse again. When I call to remember, as Paul says, I, Timothy, you're my beloved son in the gospel, and, and I, I've helped strengthen you. But what really gets to me, Timothy, is the remembrance of the unfeigned or the unwavering, the unhypocritical, the, un, the truthful love, the genuine, the sincere, the unfeigned love or faith of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and I'm persuaded I believe with everything in me that it's been passed on to you the legacy of faith the unfeigned faith the unwavering faith he tells them he says first he says he tells them um I've been praying for you and I'm doing it continually I long to see you Timothy because I miss you but when I think about all of this what moves me the most is the faith of your grandmother, the faith of your mother, and the faith that has been passed down to you. Uh, he tells him, he says, because of this, because of the faith, wherefore, or because of this, I put into remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hand. That same faith that was passed down from grandma to Momo, to you, use that same faith and begin to stir up the gift of God that was in you. Because God has not given you, Timothy, a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And, and if we think about this faith, see, faith deals with our belief in Jesus Christ. It's belief of, of his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his, his soon coming, his ascension and his soon coming. It's that faith, that hope of glory. Uh, but it's not only that faith. Uh, Timothy's grandmother and mother, Timothy's grandmother had to live something. Remember I said earlier that faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. And so the trying of our faith uh, brings us to a place of maturity. So there was something about Grandma Lois that Paul even knew about. So she must have had her faith tried in some trying times and stood strong because her faith, her unwavering, her unfeigned faith began to have an effect on her daughter. And as she stood and as Eunice, if I'm not mistaken, her daughter watched Grandma Lois go through her hard time and, and, and say, I, I believe God. I, I choose to believe God. Money may be short, but I believe God. Fight may be on, but I believe God. May only be a few beans in the cabinet, but I believe God. Scratching your head, not sure how the bills are going to be paid, but I believe God. Unsaved husband, I believe God warfare in the streets I believe God that God will make a way and that he will lift up a standard it was simply her life her legacy she was acting out her faith in front of her daughter and her, Eunice and she began to, to, to um, uh, walk it out and to live it out and to no matter what because her faith for it to be seen had to be tried and so she had an audience that maybe she didn't even know anything about and so sometimes you struggle and you feel bad because you're struggling struggling in front of your kids and sometimes you feel bad because you're struggling in front of people that you thought would stand in the faith with you and you're wondering where is God but if you'll continue to stand you have an audience of people that you'll pass that legacy down to that as they see you come out in victory you'll be able to pass that on to the next generation saying I saw my daddy go through but he stood I saw my mama go through but she stood I did didn't know how it was but all I heard her say all I heard him say is God will provide us and just like Abraham told his son son God will provide us a ram in the bush and watch it come in 
to fruition. If sometimes you begin to declare things that don't even look right, you begin to celebrate things and you begin to celebrate abundance when you don't have a dime in the bank. You begin to celebrate peace when there's war in your home. You begin to celebrate uh, healing when there's aches in your body. But God will not disappoint you and not bring your faith to shame because you're leaving a legacy of faith because whether your children are knee high or grown they're watching your faith mama and daddy and if you'll continue to stand God will bring everything to pass he's not a man that he would lie nor the son of man that he would repent if you'll stand strong in your faith the Bible says that he takes the foolish things of this world and he confounds the wise why would you look for a building for a business where you can barely pay your mortgage because it's the faith that says that God will make a way he will make a way for me to pay from my home and my dream if I stand and I believe God you're leaving a legacy of faith you're acting out this faith thing in front of the next generation so after you're gone you don't have to worry when my children know to trust God because you've acted it out in front of them you've left them in an inheritance of hope and of peace you've introduced them to the king of glory understanding that he is more than enough of what you need you not only told them about it you didn't only take them to Sunday school but they watched you when nobody else was in the kitchen and you were stirring that empty pot and God made a way and you were what they were watching you when you, you sung them and, and gave them peace and told them don't worry that God would cover us and he would meet the need and they saw that he did you're teaching them and you're giving them the legacy of faith and so Lois lived that life and, and she, she, it must have rubbed off on Eunice because Eunice came up and she began to walk that faith thing out, believing in Jesus, not accepting any other God, not accepting any other idols, not having um, to make things work because God wasn't coming through soon enough. She stood in faith. Eunice watched Lois and she stood and as she raised her son and she, she believed in God and she believed in salvation and she believed in the blood of Jesus Christ and she believed in his coming and she believed that he was a healer and she believed that he was a deliverer because that's all she knew because that's what her mama taught her and so all she knew that well uh, you know when things are going through and we didn't have beans like mama didn't have beans so let me stir the pot like mama uh, stirred the pot and begin to sing God will make a way where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my guide Hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day. God will make a way. God will. Come on, Timothy. Come on, sit down. Mama got some beans and some cornbread for you. And you're going to eat till you get full because he's Jehovah Jireh and he meets all of my needs. And how do I know that? Because I've seen my mama go through it and I've seen her stir the same pot. And I've seen the beans and the oil not run out. And I've seen her worship God in the low times. And I've seen her worship God in the high times. And in the low times and in the high times, God never changed. He was always there to sustain us. So come on, Timothy, and sit down. And so, so, so Lois raised Eunice, and Eunice raised Timothy, and they were all built up on their most holy faith. It's a legacy of faith. It's believing God sometimes when you can't trace him, when nothing in life makes sense, when your heart has been broken, when the rug has been pulled from under you, knowing that there is a God of heaven that loves you and that no matter what you go through, that he will keep your mind, he will rest your mind in perfect peace if you keep it on him it's the faith that will sustain you it's the faith of God that will keep you when I don't see what I want to see I know that God is going to make a way for me with things I, I declare things in my community that don't look right God is getting ready to bless me with a new home God is getting ready to bless me out of debt God is getting ready to heal my marriage and, and, and declaring it to people that don't, don't even believe what you believe and yet standing firm it takes the foolish things sometimes you just got to get foolish in your faith knowing that God will answer the prayer knowing that he will reward your faith that mustard seed faith sometimes you gotta see people shake their heads and walk away I have a friend that I talked to the other day 
and she was believing for her husband for over 20 years and saying that he's coming home and some people didn't believe her but that woman stood on faith and today they're on the other end of that camera worshiping the Lord see God will reward your faith sometimes you gotta let them talk about you sometimes you gotta let them walk away from you lose your friends but don't lose your faith lose your family and the people that don't believe in your dream but don't lose your faith let your heart be broken but don't lose your faith sometimes you're gonna get angry but don't lose your faith hold on to your faith with everything in you and watch God show up on your behalf there's nothing like Jesus it's the foolish faith believing in God to keep my mind when I felt like I was gonna lose it knowing that there's not a pill that doctor could give me there's nothing that they could do for me but I had to put my mind in the hands of Jesus I'm believing God for healing when they said that there were tumors and there were cysts and there is cancer hold on to your faith declare God is my healer declare that by his stripes I'm already healed declare I don't care what happened in the past I'm holding on to my faith believing God for marriages believing God for our children's children believing God and trusting God for answers that sometimes may not come when we want it it may not be the answer that we expected but knowing that God has our best interest in heart and knowing that no matter what I'm going to hold on to him because he loves me that and because of this I know that all things are working together for my good even the no even when God tells me I can't have what I think I want he loves me so my faith holds on to him even though I got to go through the surgery I didn't think I would have to he has my best interest in heart and in the end I win so I hold on to God with everything that's in me I'm going to hold on to God no matter what the things look like I'm going to hold on to God until time get better I'm going to trust the Lord Job said it like this though he slay me yet will I trust him see you got to believe that you're serving a loving kind nurturing God and sometimes he will cut things out of your life to see you prosper in your whole life sometimes he will let things fall away from you that may break your heart but then God is the mender of a broken heart and if you can just hold on to your faith God will begin to see you over and make you over again another because he's never out of control and he's never lost hope and he's never without um, a plan he doesn't haphazardly go through your life and say oh maybe this will work or maybe this won't he has a plan for you a plan to give you a future and a plan to give you a hope when you have faith that belief you hold on to um, you hold on to it with all of your life there are times when you go through in your faith and you say I'm tired and I give up the thing about faith is and if you notice is considered to be a mustard seed. And when you allow the seed of faith to take root over the years and that legacy to take root over the years into your spirit, it begins to root down. And although sometimes it's cut off at the top and sometimes your heart is broken and some days you don't feel like you can get up to face tomorrow, the root still lives down in you when you're just saying, I quit somehow you don't know where you find the strength from is that that mustard seed faith that you cultivated over the years so when the storm came and it looked like it wiped your faith out faith out the root was still in your spirit and it causes you to get up and, and continue to sing i feel like going on I feel like going on. And so when you say that you're going to quit, it's something that pushes you. When you say, why pray? Because God doesn't hear me. You find yourself on your knees anyway. When you say, I don't have anything to say, you find yourself encouraging your grown children and your small children. And, and you find that faith within you because the faith that you cultivated, the legacy that you've inherited, it's, it's rooted in you. And even when you want to quit, you can't quit. Jeremiah was so disheartened that he decided that he wouldn't speak of Jesus or, or him, God, anymore. 
And he says this in Jeremiah 20 and 9. He says, and if I say I will not remember him or speak his name anymore, then my heart becomes a, a, like a burning fire all shut up in my bones and I can't hold it. Jeremiah is like, when I wanted to quit, some of you are at a place where you're saying I'm about ready to quit. It's too late. That faith, that mustard seed faith that's kept you when your kids were hungry and he provided food, that mustard seed faith that made a way for you, that mustard seed faith that gave you to this job that you didn't deserve, that mustard seed faith that healed your marriage, that mustard seed faith that gave you hope and rebuild your family. And you might be in the storm and it feels like your faith is gone, but there is a root that that mustard seed faith over the years has taken. And just as the point like Jeremiah said, I don't have nothing else to say. There's something way down on the inside then you'll find yourself you may have to cry and you may have to rock and you you may have to remind yourself God you're not a man that you would lie I don't have anything right now father I'm writing on fumes but you promised me God you you wouldn't change your mind you you, you promised me that you would bring me to an up and shame because I trusted you you promised me that everything would pass away but I could stand on your word something way down on the inside just in the moment when you were getting ready to quit the root of that mustard seed faith the root that legacy of faith that's been passed on that you you nurtured over the years when you were by yourself and when you you didn't have anything and when you you thought you were just making it pass and folks laughed at you and they talked about you and you said you know what if I don't have nobody else's as long as I got Jesus I got enough that's just a reminder that at the point where you want to give up that mustard to see faith springs up and like fire shut up in your bone you begin to declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and, and I'm getting ready to come out of this and my morning is coming and I, I see it it might be darkest now but I feel a sunrise come on it is by the Lord's mercies that I am not consumed and that he still has mercy and I might have, have been going through right now but this is not the end of my journey and that there is a victory in the end something about the root of that mustard seed faith takes you from, uh, from victory to victory. It leads you through the valley of the shadow of death. He restores your faith. He gives you strength. And so although some of you want to quit and you don't know where this battle is going to take you, if you would just worship God because he loves you and because of who he is, he will begin to make ways for you and he will begin to sustain you and you will leave a legacy for your children because your babies are watching right now. So when they look back over time, and they say what how did we get here mom how did we get this house when you didn't have a good job you can turn around and say it's the legacy of faith I trusted God and I believe God that his word would not return void and so this is why you're in this house today this is why I'm working this job today because I chose to believe God let those be rem memorial stones of faith reminding you and your children and your children's children uh, Lois and Eunice and Timothy and the next generations there are those that are watching you to see what you will do you must hold on to your your faith because it will begin to affect the next generations it's your faith that will inspire your son and daughter to know that they can make it and you're saying in your mind but pastor I didn't have the education I want them to do better than me but if they'll look closer to you, they will see that you were a woman and a man of faith when times were hard and they know you didn't have enough and they still trying to figure out how you did what you did. They'll understand it's the faith that you held on to. See, they need to know about your faith more than they need to know about your education. They need to know about your faith more than they need to know about what you're going to leave them for inheritance. They need to know that God will sustain them and it's that faith that will take them through life that when money gets short, they can stand on that faith and to know that God is their provider. When times get dark, they can stand on that faith and know that God is their light in darkness. They can stand on the faith in the middle of their storm that money can't come and know 
know that Jesus speaks to the wind and calms the wind because of their faith. It's their faith that will take them through. It's their faith that will lead them through life. It's their faith that's going to take them from earth to glory. Their belief in God because after we leave here, see faith goes on the, past the natural. It leads into a spiritual and to eternity. If you want to leave an inheritance for your children, leave them a legacy of faith. You cannot afford to give up now. You can't afford to throw in the towel because there are those that are watching and they're journeying and their eternity depends on you holding on to your faith. Hold on my sister. Hold on my brother. I know many of you are struggling today. I know you're tired. I know you don't understand the battle. I know some of you don't even have the energy to get on your knees. But you know just, just like blind Barnabas said sometimes all we God is Lord Jesus have mercy on me and he's waiting for your cry so you can meet your needs don't give up your faith give up your friends but don't give up your faith give up your stuff but don't give up your faith give up things in this world but don't give up your faith your faith is eternal your faith will take you to glory your faith will issue you into the presence of God when this is over your faith will get, take you into a place of peace your faith will help needs be met your faith will give your children encouragement your faith is what you need more than anything in life and so today as I end this message I want to pray for those of you that are struggling in your faith pastor I've stood all these years and I feel like God is not even hearing me let go of stuff don't let go of your faith wrapped up in your faith is your peace wrapped up in your faith is your joy wrapped up in your faith is your healing Wrapped up in your faith is eternal, eternal salvation. Wrapped up in your faith is you seeing Jesus when this is all over. That's what your reward is going to be. Bow your heads with me and pray with me, Father. I pray for each and every one that is watching this program today. I pray for those that are too tired, God, to even say that, they, that they're tired, that have lost hope, that don't understand, that want answers and they're not coming Father, help them not to lose their, their faith. Be the peace that they need. Uplift them, Father. There's some, God, that feel like that they're going to lose their mind. Father, I pray that you wrap your mind, their mind in perfect peace. Help them to trust you and to see you. I speak healing to those infirm bodies right now, whether it be COVID or cancer or diabetes or arthritis. God, whatever it may be, whether it be lupus, God, whatever it may be, you are the healer and we believe in you. Father, I pray that you touch every life, touch every pastor, God, that has been standing in the gap and making up the hedge, Father, that have been praying, God, for those that are in their ministries and around this nation. Encourage pastors today. Let them know, Father, that you're with them, God. Help them not to give up their faith in the name of Jesus. Touch homes, touch hearts. Touch our nation, Father. Bring peace in the name of Jesus. Touch those that are grieving, those family members that lost, those young people in this week, God, in this weekend, Father. Mothers that our hearts are shattered, God. You are the mender of broken hearts. Father, I pray that you take them, embrace them, and carry them. Father, where they're overwhelmed, God, be the God of peace that they need in the name of Jesus. I thank you for being the healer. I thank you for being salvation. For those that are coming to you now, Father, that, that are acknowledging their sin and acknowledging, Father, that you are the forgiver of sin, Father, that Jesus came and died and shed his blood, God. For those that are acknowledging that now, God, and help them to receive you as their Savior, Father, that their faith will begin to take them from, from earth to glory, God, through every day of their lives in the name of Jesus. I speak peace. And I speak strength in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I thank you for being a part of this service. And I thank you for worshiping with us today. 
Let go of some other stuff, folk, but don't let go of your faith. Hold on to Jesus. He will not disappoint you. Why walk the journey without going all in? Go all in with the Lord, and he will not disappoint your faith. Before we close today, I wanted to take this opportunity to give you an opportunity to seed or to worship through giving. You know, giving is a type of worship, and a lot of us struggle with um, our giving and because that is a very intimate that's our labor that's 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 um it deals with our desires because we take from here we can't do the things that we desire i'm going to ask you this is that you worship god through your giving let it be an act of faith see today there's a, there's a saying that says if it doesn't meet your need then it's your seed don't eat your seat today. What I'd like you to do is go to www.newberthstockton.com and go to our donations page. Don't let your giving be an afterthought because you're not an afterthought in the heart and the minds of God. But go there and there's several ways to give. Give God your best. Seed, uh, seed, uh, so a seed for a harvest that you want to reap. If you sow little, you're only going to reap little. But if you're needing God to do something mighty on your behalf, I need you to step out in faith. Leave a memorial stone where you can tell your children, these are the things that I've done, and this is why that we're at where we are. I love you today, and I am so glad that you took time to worship with us. We are praying for you. Gather with us and partner with us in prayer. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for Coffee and Conversations. God bless you and have an amazing week. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty mighty is our God. Great and mighty. He's so great and mighty. Is our God. Great and mighty. Let
mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Didn't you enjoy worship today? I know that I did. I so needed it. It's such an amazing thing to gather together with God's people and to know that there are people that are out there worshiping and believing and trusting the God that I serve. I'm excited about what God has done. I'm looking forward to the testimonies of what he's continuing to do in your life. I pray that you're encouraged to hold on to your faith that you're endeavoring to draw closer to our Jesus and that you'll continue to be salt and light in this dying world. Let's go out new birth and those that are with us and let's make a difference. Let's let them know that the Lord loves them until next week. We'll see you again soon.